Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is a powerful Sunday service. You know, it's amazing because all through my life, I thought we also have a powerful Sunday service. We have to be together physically. And thank God that it's opening up and that's going to happen very soon and we're working towards it. But today, we're having Sunday service virtually in your home, in my home, right from this place, bringing to you the power of God. That was just a fantastic time of worshiping God, the one that opened doors and no man can shut. This morning, I want to say if you're here to this broadcast for the first time, either on social media, on television, we want to welcome you. We're excited. This is Harvesters International Christian Center. And our, our dream is that we want to change lives. We want to help people know God. We want to help marriages become stronger. We want to help you live the best life ever. Hallelujah. Through the power of God's word and through the power of the Holy Spirit. If today's your first time, listen to me. Will you just send in like an email or a text message? I have a personal gift I would love to mail back to you. And let me say something to you. If this is your church, hey, you know how you know, you know how we behave in Harvesters. Show some love on social media and say hello. Welcome them. Take a picture. Send to me. At this moment, we'll be taking our tithe and offering. And why do we give? I want to explain to you. Proverbs 11 verse 24. The Bible said, there's he that scattered, always given, and yet it's increasing. And there's he that withholds, akagum, but more than its meat, and it tends to poverty. Verse 25 says, the liberal, the giving, the general soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall also be watered. Hallelujah. As we give, giving is not a waste. As we give, the general soul is made fat. You know why? The reason why people do not give and withhold is because of fear. And anywhere there is fear, there is an invitation to Satan and to his demons. That, that's why it just keeps getting worse. But when you find people giving, you give because of faith. Because you know you can't be stuck. There will be more. Today we're going to give. All the giving channels are there on the screen. As we pray, release your faith. Either you're giving your tithe or your offerings. Or you're supporting our end on that project at this time. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithes and offerings before you today. We're given faith. We give because we love you. We refuse to let fear hold us back and cause us to hold and not be able to release in our tithe offerings and seeds. We're given faith to God and we receive the blessing that says, He that watereth shall also be watered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is our communion service and I'm going to be talking really about the communion today. You will be blessed. Like I said earlier, I hope you've taken a minute to get some bread and get you some minute to get some wine. Someone says, well, I don't have wine. If you just have a drink, you know, that way it suffices. If you just have, you know, a cracker, that way it suffices. Just something that's, you know, very symbolic of what the Lord has done. And let me say something to you quickly. I've, I've never asked you to do this before, but this is my invitation to you because i know how powerful today will be will you take a minute or two and call two or three people and ask them to connect with us either they are within your locality or they are outside the country or wherever they're watching from because they'll be mightily blessed of the lord today i want to talk to you about light and life through the communion what am i talking to you about light and life through the communion first corinthians chapter 11 first corinthians chapter 11 and this is very powerful verse 23 this is Paul speaking. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Imagine, Jesus was going to die. And one of the biggest things he could think was, before I die, this is his last moment. Do you know what it means when someone has a last moment? In the last moment of your life, you want to do the very, you want to do things that are most important in your life. The Bible says that he took bread. And what did he say? The Bible says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. The Bible says same way he went ahead and gave the cup. The reason why I'm saying that to you today is that, you know, I was watching news the other day. And, um, you know, I heard on news that in this country that the largest case of COVID-19 was discovered just a couple of days ago. Just the largest case in one day. And in that same day, people are beginning to ask to go to work. The economy is opening up. And people are saying that, do they want to kill us? They're asking us to resume. And people, this thing is going on a rampage. You know, you know there are bosses that have 
large organizations and they are confused in their heart and says, can we really ask people to resume and people will get sick? And although there's a policy that says resume in their heart, they're saying, I hope nothing really happens. Because they understand that people need to stay at home for safety, but people need to be at work for, to make money and to make profit for organizations to go forward. There are other people that are very concerned, saying that I, I don't want to get sick outside and bring sickness home and affect Junior and the sister. They're very concerned about that. And, and in the midst of this, people are asking questions. People have fears. People have and genuine fears. You know, I began to say, Lord, what will you say to your people? Well, because there's always something in God's word. Let me say that again. There's always something in God's word that can bring us assurance. There's always something in God's word that can bring us peace. There's always something in God's word. Then I found the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Do you know something? Let me, let, let, this may surprise you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is the only Bible that addresses why Christians become sick and die young. I'm telling you, there's no other scripture in the Bible that addresses it. And, and that, and I'm like, how come nobody speaks about this? This is very powerful. This, this might be the only scripture that addresses as believers. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, is that true? Let's see the Bible. 1 Corinthians 11. Just what I read. Just further down. Verse 30. The Bible says, for this cause or this reason, many are weak. The word weak means they are sick. Many are weak, sorry, weak that means they are physically weak. They are not full of strength. The other one says they are sickly. T take note of this reason. It says for this cause, listen to what it says. It says many. That is huge. It says there are a lot of people. Many are weak. Some are sickly. Many are sickly amongst you. And many sleep. Many actually die. How like, my goodness. There's a reason why people are ill, sick, and die in the Bible. I want to know that because if I can know what is killing them, I can know how to stay alive. I can know how to stay alive. And if you're wondering that, you know, I don't want to get sick, that's your service. And if you're wondering that, you know, I just want some kind of direction, that's your service. Because God is going to speak to you in a, in a very specific way. So let's talk about the communion. You know, the communion on the night just is going to die. I read part of the scripture to you. He brought the bread and the wine. And when he took the bread, he broke it and gave thanks and gave it to them and said, this is my body. Eat. This body is broken for your sake. And he took the cup. The cup was a cup of wine. And he sipped and he gave it to them and said, thanks. And give thanks and give it. This is my blood that was shed for you. This is the blood of my new covenant. The reason I'm saying so is this. The communion is more than bread and wine. The question is this, what is the communion? Why, why did God even choose the symbol of bread and wine? Which is very important. The reason why is this, how is bread created? How is bread made rather? Bread is made from grains. And when, when, when they get the grains, you know what they do? They begin to pound it. They begin to knit it and pound it. Showing that, you know, when they pound it, then they bake it. They pound it and pound it, then they bake it. That talks about Jesus Christ. When he came on earth as grain, human beings hit him. They knit him. They pounded him. And that was not enough. He went on the cross and we baked him there. Why the wine? Because how is wine made? Wine is made for grapes. When grapes are found, grapes are crushed. This is the tradition of Israel grapes in those days. They would, they would crush the grapes. And when they crush the grapes, they will put the grape in the dark room. Then you will have wine out of it. What happened to Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, when he came on earth. He was crushed. Not some say the Jews crushed him. You know why? God knew you will say the Jews crushed him. So God made sure that somebody that was a Gentile touched him. You know what that person was? His name is Pilate. All the Pharisees and Sadducees represented the Jews. Pilate represented the Gentiles, showing that it was both the Jewish community and the Gentile community that taught Jesus Christ. But the Bible says so, so the wine is crushed. And put in the dark room. So we just was crushed. He went to a dark place called hell. But after hell, our Savior rose again. So the body speaks. What is it? He said, this is my body, which is, which is broken for you. This, he said, this is my blood. The New Testament in my blood. The, so what does the body mean to us today? The body. If the body of Jesus was broken for me, my body should not be broken. My body should not be plagued. My body should not be ravaged with disease. See, this is amazing. He said, the body was broken. He said, what about the blood? I love what he says about the blood. Look, look, look at this verse. Let, let's read down. Verse 25. 
After the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, he said, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye for as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. What is the blood? Jesus Christ said, The whole of the new testament is in this blood. That is amazing. The whole of the New Testament, the blessings, the graces, the miracles, the spirit, is it in my blood. When we drink it, it says you're drinking the New Testament that's in my blood. Hallelujah. That's so powerful. So what happens to you when you take the communion? The first thing that happens to you is this. The communion brings health and life to your body. That's what I want to say to you. The communion brings health and life to your body. You could be sitting down right now. Maybe you feel sick of a certain sickness. You have a virus. Maybe it's not for something connected. You are born with an asthma. You are born with an allergy. The communion brings health and life into your body. How do I know that? I'm going to tell you I know that. See what the Bible says here. This is very powerful. The Bible says in verse 26, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Now, let me just jump quickly because I, I'm, 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 I could as well read to you. He says, verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of the Lord, but let a man examine himself, so let him eat the bread and drink of the cup. Now, see verse 29. And he that drinketh, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. If I can drink unworthily and I drink damnation, that means if I drink worthily, I can drink blessings. Hallelujah. He says, what, verse 30. For this cause many are weak, many are sickly, and many die. If drinking the cup made many weak physically, if drinking the cup made many sick physically, if Drinking the cup made people have premature deaths because they didn't drink it the right way. Guess what? Hallelujah. If I drink in the right way, I can be strong. If I drink in the right way, I can be, I can be healed. If I drink it the right way, I can be healthy. I, I can live longer. This is powerful. This is powerful. The communion brings health. And healing to your body. You know, there's this testimony in, 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 um, in the small group that I, I attend. And, and one, one of our members is, is, is a wonderful businessman. Runs a large organization. Has probably about 700 employees that work for him. And something happened. His blood pressure began to go up. Began to go up. Began to go up. But he knew. He had had teachings on the power of the communion. He didn't need the pastor to pray for him. You know, the thing about the communion is this. You never have to wait for a communion service. It's something you have to do by yourself. You can do by yourself. He took the communion. And he said, he said, every day. He said, I just, he said, we're going to give me, give me high blood hypertension pills. He said, I just began to read the Bible and take the communion every day. And he said, one time, he sent me a picture. He said, I just did my blood pressure again. He said, it's, it's ridiculously low. And I didn't use one pill. He said, the only medicine I used was the communion. I said, the communion has the power to bring health and healing to you. The communion has the power to bring... Let me show you something quickly. Psalms 105. Let me, this is going to really bless you. Psalms 105 verse 37. This is going to really bless you. This, this story is ridiculous. I mean, this story is unbelievable. Psalm 105 verse 37. Glory to God. Hey, 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 hey. Verse 37. See what the Bible says. Talking about when Israel came out of Egypt. The Bible says, and they brought them... Um, Psalm 105, verse 37. The Bible says, And they brought them forth also with silver and with gold. Next line. And there was not one feeble person amongst their tribe. This place confused me. I'm like, what? There was no one sick person amongst their tribe. Harvesters, we can afford to say in our church, there is no one sick person. This is a crowd of about two to three million people. And there was no one sick person amongst their tribe. That's what I hate about the movie. When they show the story, you know, they showed Israel carrying their old weapons on wheelchairs and on stretchers. That's not biblical. The Bible says that every grandpa and grandma, grandmother was chasing after each other. There was no feeble person amongst them. There was no feeble person amongst them. Let me tell you what the miracle is. Imagine what they were doing before that time. They were slaves. Slaves don't have the best food. Slaves walk in the worst condition. And because of 
the pressure that Joseph put on Pharaoh, Joseph, uh, sorry, Pharaoh made their life so difficult. Naturally speaking, their health should be breaking down because they've gone through so much. They don't sleep well. They don't have good food. They have to walk all the way to work. They have to do all this manual work. They should have so much sicknesses. But yet, the Bible says, there was no feeble person amongst them when they left Egypt. Someone says, okay, what does that mean to you? Because, this this is the the key. Because a night before they left Egypt, they took the Passover, which was a type of of the communion hallelujah they took the passover god told them he said stay in god put the blood on the uh, on the lintel and you eat what it it's roasted that that is a passover which is a type and listen there was miracle working power in that passover so much so that when it was time to leave everybody was strong hallelujah I said, hallelujah, the communion brings healing and health to your body. I, I heard a talk of someone today that had a, a prostate cancer. And, and this is, I mean, I could just really show you the testimony. I, I was hoping I could get such a testimony. And the person, when I had prostate cancer, he said, what I just began to do was every day, I would just sit by my bed and take the communion and declare, his body was broken for me. His blood was shed for me. There's no need for my body to be broken because his own body is broken. He said, I didn't even realize. He said, one time I went to the hospital. I think it was maybe some kind of scan they have to do or test. And they say, all the can- this guy had prostate cancer. The doctor had told him before. He said, even if you get what with the use of drugs, it can never leave really leave you. And they checked him again. And all the trace of cancer had gone. All the trace of cancer had gone. Someone says, maybe you have the virus. The communion is your choice. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it will drive it away. The, it will drive it away. The, hallelujah. The second thing the communion does is this. The communion breeds a consciousness of heaven. You know, something I like about the communion, you know, when you are on earth, for example, many of you run businesses, and I know you're looking for information, you're watching dollar price, you're watching commodity price, and you're watching this and that, and you can have things that will increase your faith, and things that will depress you, and you're so worried. Sometimes all you need is a heaven consciousness. That's what you need. Just a conscious of who your God is. How big your God is. You know what I notice? When I take the communion, the first thing it does is it calms my emotions. Many of you are here. You're running a business. And you've made certain losses. And you're coming under pressure because it seems as if you can't meet the target. You can't, pay the, you, can't pay, you can't do that loan repayment. And you're putting everyone under pressure. Calm down, sir. Calm down. Calm down take the communion maybe you're going for maybe you're going for a job interview and you've heard that the who and who will be there this guy came from cambridge and that one came from israel and that one studied in japan and you just went to university of um abuja or maybe university of um Osu or something like that and you wonder who knows me take the communion because when you go into something afraid your tendency to fail is increased you need to go in confidence just go when you take the communion it just increases the consciousness of god that's what David had. What did David say? David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say, I will not have tough times. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What does it? It brings a consciousness. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. It brings a consciousness of God's love. It brings a consciousness of God's presence. See, and what that does to you as a person, there's just assurance. You know, Maybe your husband is going to work and coming back and that thing says, maybe he has brought virus home today. Just say no. Just say, honey, when you're coming, there's a communion at the door. Take it. We put you under the blood right now. Praise God. <laughs> we put you under the blood right now. We put, we cover you with the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You come back and the doctor said this and that. Take the communion. Because the more you read the doctor's report on how you can have a, um, a child, how your hormones are going crazy, you, that's it. Take the communion. Hallelujah. This is a way to say it. Just imagine, this is a way to say it. Just imagine you have a police case. And it's a very tough police case. And they said, there's a warrant to arrest you. And you walk into the police station with the governor. How will you do? 
When you walk in with the governor, you don't walk with your head bowed. You come in with full confidence. The reason is because of someone that's with you. When you take the communion, you are conscious of who is with you. That greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. And guess what? When you have assurance, divine direction is clear when we are conscious of his presence. I'm telling you, the Bible says, it says, it says, but still I know that I am God. This, it, let me tell you something. Many of you are trying to take very strategic business positioning right now in your business. Maybe there's an, maybe, maybe there's an opening. There's something you're trying to do in your business. He says, you will not find it in one up and down. He said, be still. How do you become still? Calm down your emotions. And know I am the Lord. The Bible says, in quietness and confidence shall your strength be. I'm telling you, wait, it says, out of you will draw waters out of what out of the well of Zion. The third thing the communion will do for you is this: the communion will amplify illumination. I'm telling you, in Luke chapter 24, I wish I had time to show you the scripture. Huh. Jesus Christ appeared to two disciples. They were walking up and down, walking up and down. He appeared to them, and he went on a journey. And they said, "Please pass the night." And of course, he passed the night. He was going to pass the night. Then all of a sudden. They didn't even take the communion. Jesus only took bread. And when he blessed the bread, they didn't take, he just blessed the bread. When he blessed the bread, the Bible says, their eyes opened. And they knew it was Jesus. But he has been talking to them for several hours. Listen, they didn't even eat the bread. They just blessed the bread. And their eyes opened. There's something. Someone says, maybe, maybe the way blessed the bread was something we're used to. Come on. He spoke to them for the past six hours. The journey from Jerusalem to where they were is, a, is 10 miles. He saw that they didn't know who he was because they couldn't see. But there was something about him blessing that bread and cut, breaking it up that just opened their eyes. They just saw it. I'm saying something. Many of you are trying to take a strategic position for your business. You're trying to reposition your business. You're trying to reposition what you do. You're wondering, these are the stats. What should I do? You've seen the budget. You've seen the positioning. You've seen, you're, you're making analysis. And you're wondering what to do. Listen, before you take a decision, you go to God in prayer, put the communion there. When you took the communion and take it, the eyes will open, sir. The eyes will open. Once the eyes open, you will see. I'm telling you, Jesus was there all along, but they never could see that was Jesus Christ. I'm saying so because some of you are here and things are happening to you and you're wondering, what's going on? What will I do next? As a mother, you're worried. Okay, how will I manage my job and this school thing? You know, as a career person, you're wondering, are they going to lay us off? Is this pay cut for a long time? How will I achieve my goal? As a single girl, you're wondering, you know, there's John is over there. He loves me a lot. And Aki is over there. He's a great guy. And, and, and you know, and, and Sean is over there. He's fantastic. And imagine, you know, Kechi's over there. He's really handsome. And there's, and, and, and there's, you know, this other guy that comes from the U.S. Which of them is good? I said, take the communion. Your eyes will open. Once your eyes open, you will begin to see what you could not see. Jesus was in front of them forever. They couldn't see him. There's something about breaking bread that amplifies illumination. And the, and the last thing I will say is this. <laughs> hey, how will I say this to you? Hmm. The communion releases a part of God. I'm telling you, you know, because human beings, you know, when they say pray and believe, you, we want to touch something, we want to feel something, we want to touch, but there's nothing to touch. The communion release. So, the, because the communion itself is a point of contact. The woman said, even the children and the, 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 the servants eat of the crumbs that fall from the table and they're healed. We are not eating of crumbs, sir. We are eating the whole bread, sir. Ah! We are eating. See, there's something about you eating or touching. Just the fact that you can touch it, it helps your faith. It helps your faith. Listen, you can't have a baby. Communion is the answer, sir. Hey, it is. Communion is the reminder that the curse of Satan has no foothold in your life. Communion is a reminder that the curse of Satan, the curse of this world, has no foothold in your life. So, so what do you mean? We lost the garden of Eden and who man was because Adam and it ate something. We gained back the garden by eating something again. Hallelujah. We get it back by eating something. They ate the fruits and we lost the garden. We hit the communion and we get back the garden. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We get it back by eating something. Uh, so I said, eh, this was a witch 
and wizard. I said, witch and wizard? He said, what makes you witch and wizard? You know, let me tell you something. When they say witches and wizards, they drink blood. I, I'm not even sure how they drink blood. But the reason why they make them feel that way is that there's a consciousness they want them to have that they are superhuman. They drink human blood. <laughs> if what makes you a witch, if you know a witch, call them to watch now because I want to talk to them. If you have any power, show it. Nothing can happen. If what makes you be a witch is that you drink blood and you eat body. Me, I drink blood. Me, I eat body. I eat the blood, not of human, of God. I eat blood of God. You are eating ordinary human being and you think you are big I'm eating the blood and the body of God hallelujah the curse has nothing on me nothing nothing on me the curse has nothing on me the curse came by eating the forbidden fruit life comes by eating the accepted fruit the tree of life that's the life in Christ Someone says, okay, I'm going to a challenge. What do I do right now? The communion can help you. Someone says, okay, pastor, if you want to the communion, I don't have bread right now. I don't have wine. What do you have? Do you have some ribina? That can do. Do you have some agege bread? That can do. Hallelujah. Someone says, pastor, yes, but I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I, I've heard that if you, if, if you take the communion and you're not worthy, let me correct that quickly because there's an error in that, in, in that place. So the question is that what should be a blessing scares us a lot because we've been taught wrongly. What should be a blessing scares us a lot because we've been taught. Let me say it again. What should be a blessing? A lot of people stay away from the communion because it's now scary because of religion has turned down theology. It has confused people. See what the Bible says. First Corinthians 11. This is what it means. The Bible says this. Wherefore, verse 27, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the blood, body and the blood of the Lord. So let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not the son in the Lord's body, for this cause many are weak, sickly, and many sleep amongst you. Notice some, this is just English. When he addressed this issue, what was he addressing? Did he say the person was unworthy or the person drank or ate unworthily? No. Mm. He never said that an unworthy person drank it. He said what happened was this. A worthy person drank or ate unworthily. What does it mean to eat or drink unworthily? He says it's right there. They ate it in verse 29. Not discerning the Lord's body. They ate it like, you know, they ate it like some kind of lunch. They ate it like some kind of food. They just ate it anyhow. They, their mind was brainless. And let me tell you something. Nothing kills the power of communion like eating it out of religion. Nothing destroys like that. So, he says, rather than eating it unworthily, unworthily, so... There's nobody that is unworthy as a person once you are in Christ. There is no Christian that is unworthy. You have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no way God can call you unworthy. You can only drink unworthily. I know that's not what you've heard, but take time and think about it. Check it out. It's in the Bible. So where do I start from? If I wanted to come in, let me say something to you. Maybe you have a debt to pay as a businessman. And moratorium is over. You have to pay this coming end of the month 88 million naira. Maybe you are going for a job interview. Maybe you don't have a job right now. Maybe in your office they have just placed some kind of politics to sideline you. Maybe what's happening right now is that there's a top project they're giving you and you're the team lead. And this project is critical to the survival of the company especially in this season. What do you do? You start from a place of faith. See, when you want to take the communion, you don't, you, don't, you don't try it. Watch this now. Trying to see if it works is never faith. What is faith? It works and I'm proving it. We work by faith. and So you start the communion from a place of faith. The second thing is this. Before you take the communion, spend time in meditation. Like this message, go back and watch it over and over again. And the communion is not something you just take once in the service. What do you do? Take the communion. Pray. 
while you pray. Eat and drink it meaningfully. I said, eating and drinking it. Think, his body was broken for me. His blood was shed for me. Begin to declare what it's doing. See, declare, it's good to say it was shed for me. But can you declare what it's doing in your life? Because his body is broken for me, the high blood pressure cannot stay in my body. Because his blood was shed for me, there can be no cause in my life again. Why are you finish doing that? So you pray, you eat and drink. Then what's the next thing? You pray in the spirit and begin to declare the word of God. Ah, when you finish this word, you pray in the spirit, begin to declare the word of God. And as I'm doing that, guess what? Be sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. What I say? Be sensitive to the guidance. So as you're praying, don't just pray with empty mind. Open up your mind. So why do you say open up your mind? The scripture I showed to you, Luke 24. Did you notice what the disciples said? When, just Christ, when they finally knew Jesus Christ and saw him, they said, all the while he spoke to us was our heart not burning that our heart was we felt something you know what i'm saying so most times god is directing people on the inside but they don't know they sense the sensation but they're not able to pay attention that the spirit is saying something and i'm you know i'm saying this to you christians know how to receive direction when it comes to operational things oh do this do that, do that. but when it comes to strategic things in strategic thinking Christians don't know how to what, how to receive direction because strategic. Most of them are not even exposed to strategic thinking, even when it's there because it's futuristic. They neglect it. So most Christians, if God has shown them a vision like Joseph that there will be seven years of plenty, seven years of uh, famine, they will not respond to it because they are not used to strategic, strategic thinking. I'm saying this here because as you're praying, as you're praying, you open up your mind. Not operational thinking. No, Father, I need this. And strat- Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, where is this country going? How do I position myself? This country, this company I'm leading, how do I become the end of first bank? You begin to say, how do I achieve this goal of being a governor? Those are strategic things you're praying now. As you pray, the Bible says their heart was burning within them. Listen to me. You ha- their heart was burning, but they didn't understand why your heart is burning. Let me explain this. And next week, I'll be teaching on how to know if it's God that is speaking to you. I'm going to talk about seven ways God talks to you and how to know if it's God. When your hand begins to burn, the way guidance works is it. If God must continue talking, he must have your attention. Until Moses turned around to look at the burning bush, there was no further instruction. It was when he turned around that he said, take off the, your foot, your, your slippers, where your eyes only. The problem is this, God is speaking, you have not turned around. Today, even when the service is over, you just say, honey, wait. You and your wife, you grab your hands together. All the ghosts, this day is special, all the ghosts for June, you bring it together. You start praying fire. You start praying fire because the fire must fall. Let me tell you something. COVID-19 must not be the reason for your failure. It must not be the reason why your goals are not met. Why? Unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far beyond what we can also think. He's the one that opens the door and no man can shut it. He's the one that shuts the door and no man can open it. I believe that this is your season. What about in, 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 in the cell I laid? One man, the first of COVID 19, lost over a billion naira. One person. When he came for cell meeting, and if I'm not in a small group, I feel really bad about you. You have to find a way to get there. People that can help your faith. Oh, when he came for cell meeting, he said, Pastor Bolaji, my blood pressure right now is 170, 130. Then if he drops dead right there, it's not, it's not that accident happened. No. That's how he would die with that kind of blood pressure. I told him, he said, I'm finished. He said, how, where do I start from? I just, what I did, I took communion, brought it out. I said, let's take communion. When you don't know what to do, take communion. He came back a couple of weeks ago. He said, everything I've lost, I've recovered. I'm now moving over what I've lost now. The season is not over, but God has restored everything. I'm telling you because something strange is happening. There's explosion. Financial explosion. Business explosion. Healings. As I'm speaking to you right now, healings are taking place this morning. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you something. Business ideas are breaking forth. Some of you, you're going to get to work and the favor of God is released right now.